Thanks to your efforts over the years, True Footy has finally got a sponsor worthy of the channel. Who's the sponsor, Bush? This sponsor of ours is the best in below the belt grooming and they provide pre precision engineered tools for your family jewels. That sounds lovely. Manscaped.com has just launched here in Australia and now after many years without having access to the right tools for the job, the True Footy community will be the, some of the first people in Australia to have access to this incredible technology which makes a previously arduous task incredibly easy. Jesse, have you ever passed out with your balls in a compromising position? Not lately. Well, I have. And if I had access to the products available at manscaped.com, at least your roommates would have been subjected to the view of a nicely trimmed set of balls. Manscaped's elite team of scrotum specialists have spent the past 18 months re-engineering the electric trimmer. And the end result of this is the greatest ball trimming technology ever conceived. And you can buy the Lawnmower 3.0 for yourself. Third edition, first two times they've figured it out, but the third time they've really figured it out. I'm not looking <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah, that wasn't the best. <laughs> Jesse, have you ever been concerned about your balls going emo on you? There have been times, yes, Pusher. Fair enough, it's a very understandable concern. But well, with the Lawnmower 3.0, this should be the least of your worries because due to the new ceramic blade technology Manscaped has used, cutting and other grooming incidents have been greatly reduced. That sounds nice. You know what else is nice? I believe we're planning a trip down to Bunbury soon to St. Joyce, is that correct? That is correct, can confirm. Well, thank you to the powerful battery in the Lawnmower 3.0. It will last 90 minutes, so I can pretty much spend the whole trip grooming my balls to my heart's desire. Is that fine with you? I hope there's no cops on the road. You'll be the one driving, so it's your problem, not mine. <laughs> I don't think that's the law. Also with that powerful battery, it also provides light from a powerful LED on the Lawnmower 3.0. This light is so powerful it makes Aragon from Lord of the Rings go, The beacons are lit! Gondor calls for aid! <laughs> Have you ever unexpectedly garnered the attention of the opposite sex on a night out? Constantly. Lucky you, I haven't had that experience myself. But anyway, thanks to Manscaped's quiet stroke technology, you can use the Lawnmower 3.0 to sneak into the bathroom at the pub, club, wherever you are, sneak in there, trim to your heart's content without the bouncer hearing you because of the quiet motor, and you can come out not worrying about that woman seeing your untrimmed bush. Finally, a brand that understands my needs. <laughs> exactly. Manscaped understand the things we go through. We're unorganised. We make it up as we go along, most blokes, so bloody hell. You're kidding. The Lawnmower 3.0 even has an intelligently designed USB charging stand, which allows you to show the mower loud and proud. Would you show your mower loud and proud? I have, and been subsequently arrested. <laughs> I mean, did you get convicted, though? <laughs> <laughs> Where would you have gone with that? I don't know. <laughs> if you're listening to me right now, I want you to experience firsthand for yourself Power of Manscaped and trim that junk of yours. Use the code TRUEFOOTY and you'll get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. <gasps> Bush, what's this box that's just appeared? Well, it appears our friends of Manscaped are magical and have made... A, a lawnmower 3.0 appear before our very eyes. That's hot. Looks like there's a fair bit more than just the lawnmower 3.0 in this thing, though. Wonderful. Tell me about the range of products in here. All right, let's crack her open and see what we got. First, we've got the Crop Preserver, which is an anti-chafing ball deodorant with active pH control. I need that for my acidic balls. Our next product is a Crop Reviver, which is a refreshing ball toner, which, uh, which also has active pH control. And it is made without sulfates and is gentle on the skin. Lovely. We've got a nice fresh pair of undies, which make the package look great. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to try them on yet. We've got the USB charging stand. Ooh. And we've also got the little clip here to make sure you have that extra length if you want it. I need extra length. You and me both. And last but not least, Bush, what is that impressive looking vessel down there? This is the Lawnmower 3.0. If you are interested in purchasing this product or any other product from manscaped.com and you would like 20% off and free shipping, use the code TRUEFOOTY, all capital letters, no spaces, at manscaped.com when you place your next order. And think of us while you shave your nuts. All right, g'day, g'day. Welcome back to True Footy Podcast 58. I'm pretty yep, sure I checked that before coming this time. Last so one was 57. You haven't it, it sneaked was. one in before me, have you? No, no. Well, this is a pretty quick sort of back-to-back potty. When was the last time we did? S Sunday, wasn't Sunday, it? Sunday, is it? Yeah. yeah, and today is Thursday. So, yeah. yeah, no, we're going pretty well at the moment, yeah. Busher. Bit of a hot streak. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Looking very fresh today. Yeah, nice outfits, aren't they? Yes. Very yes. fresh. Very slimming. Yeah. Uh, these are shirts, thanks to our new sponsors, Manscaped. Well, sort yeah. of trial sponsorship yeah. at the moment. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we got the delivery from America yeah. with um, this and a 
box of goodies, oh. Bush, as, as everyone yeah. would have We've got seen. a nice unboxing video we prepared earlier as well. Yes. People will be able to see what they can get when they buy their own lawnmower 3.0. Exactly. See, I'm still in spruiking mode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're just uh, advertising machines at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's good. So we're very grateful to the opportunity they've given us. Um, few, quite a few people have jumped on board yeah. using the discount code. The amount of people that have messaged me in the last week and said, damn, I had just bought one right before yeah. you got the uh, discount code. Did you have people like that as well? I'd, a friend, he hadn't bought a Manscaped, but he'd bought us. Yeah, ah, right, yeah. up in the last part, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh, well, no, good opportunity to get, yeah. jump on. It actually seems like a pretty good product yeah. as well. I was pretty impressed with the undies that came in the pack today, actually, so I might even use the code to get a few more pairs of undies, I Yeah, reckon. true. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah sweet. And they gave us a little uh, newspaper. Yeah, a little newspaper here. Yeah, that Some is... Some pretty uh, funny... They've got a few little funny bits in here, but there's a obituary for a guy called Gerardo Perkins who owned a gay nightclub. He was jealous of their abilities to groom themselves so well, so he died of jealousy, apparently. Ah, uh-huh, there you go. Yeah. That's finally a had a manscaped. That is a lot of effort. I wonder if all the uh, products come with uh, that or if that was a special... I know uh, it might just be for us because we're special. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> How can I was tell? flattered. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, nah. Cool. cool. All right, today, Bush, we will go through um, an important podcast, the mid-season grade. We did this last year. Yep. where we pretty much just went through each team with a few comments about how they're going, how they're tracking along, especially compared to like pre-season expectations. Yeah. Um, it did fairly well the last year's potty, I think, as well. Yeah. And uh, it's popular yeah. content, I'd guess. Yeah, People it is. Sort of going a bit like one in here if their team's doing shit according to us or if they're doing yeah. good according to us, what, yeah. whatever the value that gives people. <laughs> <laughs> whatever validation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So the format we went with last year and I think we'll do again is, uh, I've actually got it from uh, ascending order from the bottom of the ladder. Oh. Is that going to throw you off? I can work with it. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so I'll be I was, flicking a little, but I can work with it. Yeah, the format would be team, what their expectations were, where they're at, a yeah. um, few questions, yeah. a few talking points, um, and then to predict what they're going to end up on and yeah. grade their performance so yeah. far. So why don't we start with the Crows Bush? Yep, that's um, an easy one. Preseason expectation, fair to say, pretty low. Yeah, I was pretty. Yeah, pretty low. I think I, I think I had them second last or third last. So I've, I probably. Didn't quite have them this bad, but yeah, I would have had them bottom mm. two, I think. Well, I wouldn't have had them zero and ten, which is what they are. Definitely not and zero and ten. so much worse than the next worst side mm. at the moment. That's Sydney. Um, but mind you, they did actually have a pretty good game against Sydney in round one, but the, it feels like the gap is widening, and I think yeah. they may be feeling a little bit demoralised the further the season goes. Zero and ten, I, I believe the first side to do that. Buddy, I th- You think the first side to go zero and ten? I'm, I could be wrong. No, I think they are. And 55% really speaks to, like, the horrible... That is putrid. Adelaide are a successful club as well. Overall, yeah. Like, even just, like, throughout my time following football, I think I've seen them miss a f- the finals a handful of times, and I've definitely never seen them in the bottom four. I'm pretty confident Yeah, they've definitely that. not attained a bottom out until now, obviously, but... Yeah, yeah and now you can say they're... Out. So a bit, they were a bit like the Eagles in that sense. They never really bottomed out, like, yeah. even when they weren't that good. Mm. Yeah, so, like, Adelaide were good when the Eagles were good in, like... 2005, yeah. yeah so, and then they just held strong up until like 2017. They were a fairly good yeah. side. We didn't necessarily make finals every year, but to see them in the state they are, like this would be unfamiliar They're territory. Shambles at the moment. Yeah, They're absolute shambles. Unfamiliar territory for their fans as well. Um, will they go winless with uh, seven games left in the season? Bearing in mind it's a shorter season, obviously, Ooh. and they've already played North Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Fremantle, and uh, Melbourne, yeah. and lost to them all, obviously. You, you could see them picking one off maybe against like a Hawthorne, Carlton level of mm. team. Probably mm. not knocking off a top tier team at this point, but you, I could see them catching like a like one of those teams in like that twelve to like fifteen yeah. sort of range off guard. Well, that is like the the lowest ranked side they'll play again because yeah. they've played the sides that are also bottom four. Yeah. Um. So they also got smashed by Gold Coast from memory as well. So yeah, it really it, there is a good chance they'll go. Zero and seventeen. I have to say, yeah. I thought Melbourne was a good chance for them to sort of rise, and North yeah. Melbourne the previous week, but they got annihilated. They were their best teams. two chances, I think. Yeah, They'd blind them for sure. Yeah, for sure. Do you um do you think it'll get worse for them before it gets better? Yes, I reckon they're in for it. Unf- I hate to say, well, I don't know. Well, I'm fairly neutral towards Adelaide, so yeah, I don't really feel much anyway. But I think they're in for a rough few years. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's hard to imagine it getting worse than a zero yeah. and seventeen season yeah. if that's what happens. But uh, I can see both Crouch boys and leaving potentially mm. if things go wrong, like the right sort of way. Or wrong yeah, way, however you're looking at it. Yeah, that's right. The uh, yeah, it's. I feel like they're at the start of their rebuild. Yeah. Like in terms of the youth, they've got to add to the list. 
yeah. that's really just kicking off. So I've got a couple of good kids, but on the whole, sure, yeah, yeah you really you need like. Half a dozen to be yeah. kids, but and thing is, they do have good kids, but I don't see any of them as a potential A grader, except maybe Macus is a key back, yeah. And then and, and there's Fogarty, who's like a deep forward, best case yeah. scenario, becomes like a stringer type, maybe yeah. maybe a better version of stringer, even to go like if it, yeah, he's a stringer, best case yeah. scenario to go yeah. And even then, I just don't think he's quite that good. No, he's not as explosive as to go, yeah, think. yeah. So, um, I'm gonna give him an F, yeah, definitely, even F. though the expectations are low, and my prediction will be spoon. Yeah. I think that's and also like F like off field stuff like those comments Mark Rashudo mm. made early in the year about their free agency and stuff like that that's absolute failure that's abysmal from an off field perspective the way yeah. that clubs handled some of these things this, recently this year will be reflected on for them is it the horror year for the Eagles it was 2010 it was pretty uh-huh. much and 2007 but 2020 for Adelaide that'll be the year uh-huh. that they think fuck never what again. if Adelaide end up winning three or four games what do you think's the low point the camp or this season if they end up somehow winning three or four games this year. Uh, yeah, you have to say the camp just because of the destruction that yeah. led to the downfall of this club. Yeah. Like, people try and play it down, but the amount of players that are referencing this camp still. And the Because uh, I read the article that McClure wrote, Sam McClure, hmm. where he was sort of Not saying me. specifics, yeah, <laughs> about what happened. Yeah, and yeah, there's exactly. Some pre- there's some stuff that's in it pretty egregious. Yeah. Especially the fact they're letting some third-party organisation... With no qualified people in mental health, fuck with people's heads. Yeah, if the allegations of what's happening there yeah, is the true, collective is, mind or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, we'll move on to the Sydney Swans um, preseason expectation. I again had them bottom two or three. What I'm probably think? yeah, similar bottom four, maybe bottom six. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, they're, they're a side that's just again so successful that. I've never really seen a really, really bad Sydney team. Even though I think they finished bottom four, was it last year? Yeah, they yeah. finished bottom four last year, but they still had that potential to beat teams. Like I think because they beat the Eagles by yeah. eight goals as well, that was a factor yeah. in me really like rating them. And then there's the Buddy Franklin factor, yeah. but they really haven't gotten their season started this year. They run in round one. They sit three and six at seventeenth, um, a fair bit better than Adelaide. We'll yeah. say that, but uh, at seventy eight percent. Um, things not really going their way this year and obviously Buddy's been out yeah. and then Kennedy uh, sorry not Ke- was it Kennedy and um, yeah they've had no, who they got people in and out yeah. like, that, they haven't had like full strength well. much yeah Heaney got injured a couple of weeks ago yeah and it's a side that relies a lot on yeah. their experienced players in terms of like there's a big gap top heavy big generational gap and now I really rate their youth there's not a lot in between other than someone like a Tom Papley yeah. what, you know what occurs to me this day how funny would it have been if Sydney had gone through trading Pap trading Papley and trading in Danaher. Like, Papley's like the one thing that's gone right for them this yeah. year. And that Danaher could've... hasn't gone on the path. Exactly right. So, I mean, obviously that's a very short, short-minded, uh, sorry, yeah. short-term oriented view. But, yeah, to think that they nearly had to let Papley go, that's, uh, yeah. that's that would be a massive blow. Um, so those two first-round picks could have been a couple of handy players. Yeah, Two first round picks. Oh, okay. You mean two Papley? Papley yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it? Because it was Carlton from two first rounders to try and was get him. Was it two wasn't first it? rounders? I think so. Or was it a first rounder and a second? Yeah, or something? Possibly I something I like that. Yeah. yeah. So long term, there might have been yeah. been something like that. But it's fair to say the the benefits of the Buddy Franklin deal have really well and truly worn off the Swans. Yeah. yeah. I had so, I had some interesting. Someone had an interesting point about the benefit of the Buddy Franklin deal. Uh, from a Sydney perspective, and it, they were actually quite strong on the idea that yes, he didn't win a flag with them, but the f- the fact that he was a household name in Sydney that wasn't yeah. really a thing before, yeah. like a, a like an AFL player having a that presence. Yeah. So they seem to this person I think is Sydney based that was telling me seemed to be pretty strong on the idea that yeah, it was a net positive for the yeah. Swans, even though at the moment you're like no yeah. flag, no win. But yeah, because you need that kind of celebrity to try and get the eastern, like eastern seaboard, sort of involved in footy. But yeah. I think that they need incentive to get involved in footy rather than just growing up with it and loving it. They need a reason to mm. get behind it. And us here in Perth, who are quite analytical of just the footy, like it's it's easy to overlook that value. Yeah. Like I had no real concept of of that. So that's interesting. Um, but we'll say a prediction bottom four. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fairly... They're fairly locked into that now. How would you grade this season based on everything we just said? Ooh, they're probably in that D plus, C minus range. Like, Yeah. I'll give them a D because second yeah. last is still way yeah. below their expectations. Yes, they've had injuries, um, but it is harsh, but it, like, it could have gone better. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, it's a bit worse than 
what I would give uh, like a C is when things go to plan to an extent uh, or at least hit your baseline I would say Sydney probably haven't hit their baseline mm. so yeah let's move on to your boys Fremantle preseason yeah. expectation uh, you were fairly negative preseason yeah I was I, I had us as spoon contenders myself yeah okay so I had them as bottom six which is more or less where they've yeah. been for the last three years or four years yeah. um, they currently sit 16th at three and six so yeah. along with those uh, with along with Sydney 85% what are your all early thoughts on J Lo, the new coach? I'm liking what I'm saying. Like the style, stylistically, we've played. Like even the games we've lost, we've been quite competitive in most of them. Though a couple of them we weren't great at all. But mm. on the whole, we've been competitive even when we've lost. On the whole, oh, with the W. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like the, he's playing a more modern style. Like even you see, him make some game day adjustments, which is an invaluable attribute in a coach. Which is one thing we thought I thought we might lose out on getting rid of Ross Lyon as much as I wanted to get rid of him for other reasons. That's one area we did probably have some value but JLo's shown good mm. capacity in that regard too yeah yeah fair enough I uh, yeah I, I think with Fremantle I think they have at least played with good spirit under this new coach yeah which is you know the way you, well, you want to yeah. start under a new coach yeah. and the other thing that's sort of in the wins and even in the competitive losses it's not been Fife there's other guys that are starting yeah. to become potential match winners if not best mm. on ground match winners themselves Brayshaw's probably had some best on grounds Sarong very early in his career yes probably been best on ground once or twice already. yeah how good was Sarong on the weekend against Collingwood bloody good oh, was so right mate Sunday. he's so right aha yeah no, he was, I was uh, so wrong about him during the draft <laughs> yeah you were negative I, was, I, was, I thought he was a bit vanilla but boy was yeah, I wrong he might be better than the other two Liam yeah. Henry hasn't got on the park yet but yeah yeah um, Crazy injury adversity, and that's just becoming a common trend for yeah. Fremantle. That's um, another thing where I'd be quite critical of the club, the strength and conditioning mm. aspect at the moment. Like, You can't blame them for everything. Like, Obviously, every club's having a lot of soft tissue issues at the moment, all that stuff. Yeah. But some of the management of our injuries over the years not been great. Like Fifey, even recently with the hammy, they brought him back too soon, and then he really did and had to sit for a few more weeks. But handling. Yeah, the whole handling thing. I don't know. Too, like The descriptions around here are a bit vague, but it sort of sounds like... As the most recent I'd heard, him and his player manager met with the club to say their concerns about like the health and strength mm. and conditioning. Yeah, how Hamling potentially might never be able to play again because of I don't know the specifics of it was like mismanagement or what, but it sounds like yeah a misdiagnosis or something's led to pretty big yeah. accusation toward a club that have so many injury issues. You have to wonder has mismanagement mm. been the root cause of a lot of it? Who knows? Well, Harley Bennell is another example. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, Even apparently Hogan last year with his foot situation, he thought it was just he thought he'd redone the whatever the bone or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But then the f- club told him it was a strain and kept going, so he kept going. Then actually Reid did do the foot. Oh. That's what happened last year apparently. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It sounds like there's. Uh... You're hearing enough of those sort of stories. You don't know the yeah. sp- how contextually they all are, but mm-hmm. enough of those sort of whispers and stuff to go something's wrong. Yeah. For me. Fair enough. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's something that needs to be looked at. Um, predict the rest of this season based on what you've seen lately so I thought they actually played yeah. alright against Geelong in the game where they scored two goals four yeah. in the sense that you know when you score two goals four you think shit that yeah. was one of the worst games ever but Fremantle, Geelong didn't score that much yeah. they didn't and I thought Fremantle just like played with a good intensity it's yeah. just that they dropped everything that could yeah. have been marked they like, still, in the world they still need to get the skills up like yeah because that's one area like where Ross was sort of more of a system rather than a skills sort of coach. Mm. Yeah. Whereas J-Lo emphasises the use of skills, so the guys are probably need another pre-season or two to mm. get up to, really up to that standard. Yeah. Well, more there probably are guys up to that standard, but you need more of your guys over the whole list up to that sort of... Yeah. So you can get chains off rather than... Yeah, you know what I mean? This is not a will... A can they, but this is a will they. Will they win enough games to climb out of the bottom four? Probably not. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm thinking probably finish around about where they are now. Yeah, I could see it's top of the top half of the bottom floor. Yeah, maybe just yeah. out of it fifth last. And how would you grade it so far? I'd probably say C minus. Yeah, C. I think I gave them a D. Yeah, and not in a good way. Nah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean bad injury luck, but uh, they're sort of still training in the wrong direction. I'd think they'd be unhappy with the ladder position they have at the moment. Uh. I mean, J Lo probably doesn't care too much because he's a new yeah. coach. But I'm just saying generally, yeah. C minus D, yeah. probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are a lot of optim- fans who are a lot more optimistic about the team coming in than I was. Yeah, fair enough. A few people that were saying final smoke. He's like, nah. Yeah, fair not enough. This year, maybe next year or the year after. Yep. Yeah. Um, the other bottom four team, North Melbourne, preseason expectation. Mm. I had bottom six. What did you have? 
I probably had them pushing finals, like yeah, you know, the eight to twelve that. region. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so I had them probably yeah twelve to fourteen. Yeah. So where are they? Fifteenth. They're three and six again. Eighty-eight percent. So percentage just separates those last three teams. Yeah. Um, what have you made of them so far? They're not the same team, but I'm just saying like Ben Brown's been the focal point from the past few years. He's faded out, even though. Part mm. of that's probably other teams just focusing on him and saying beat mm. us with someone else. The delivery should... hasn't been good either. Yeah, and that yeah. butchered it into him. And the other the other guy who's probably their best ball user as well is Pollock, another yeah. guy who's been dropped. So yeah. it's they have played well, they played one good game since yeah. they dropped them. McDonald had like thirty five posies the other that day. That was against Adelaide though. Yeah. So they all kind of cashed <laughs> in and that probably means um, I haven't looked at the teams yeah. lately because since the festival of footy started, everything's yeah. thrown out, so there's no Thursday night teams. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if they will have made their way back into the side after the North Melbourne just slaughtered. Oh, no, wait, yeah. hang on. North played Geelong. I'm getting so out of track with Fremier. Yeah, they played, yeah, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, 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 that of course that threw did. me as well, actually, that game. I got a mix Yeah, up. I literally didn't know it was yeah. on. Because so, I ended up coming around to yours for beers last night, and then I saw there was the results of that game. I'm like, what? Yeah, I want to see. I don't think... Nah, you got no Ben Brown in that team. And Pollock, um, oh Pollock played. Okay. Oh no, they do. They both played. No, my yeah. mistake. Okay, so they've made their way back into the team. Yeah, you couldn't keep Ben Brown out for long. Yeah, I just thought maybe because they belted yeah. Adelaide, there was a bad yeah. week for him to come back. Yeah. Anyway, um, still, I think they've had some good signs from like Simpkin as a player that yeah. is an important player for like moving this club forward. Yeah. LDU's been recovering from osteitis pubis, but Jed Anderson, I saw a couple of weeks ago, had a really good mm. game. I was quite impressed with him. Yeah. I think LDU had like 17 and two goals the other yeah. day. So. Jed Anderson had like a 28 and yeah. killed Yeah, I don't it think he's as young as you might think, though. Yeah, he's not ridiculously young, but he's still in that sort of yeah. crop, I he's think, right. rather than like your Cunnington Zeebel older hat crop at North. Mm. Yeah. Cunnington's the other one. It seems like he's having some back concerns from what I've heard. Like the Yeah. Probably from carrying the side for the last few yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, fuck it over. No, well, that's probably it. Like, maybe if they've those guys have dropped off, then that's yeah. why North has dropped off. And, I've, yeah, yeah, they need to push towards the youth, like I've been saying. And they, they've got some youth. So yeah. they're going through that process slowly. What do you think of... Uh, we touched on it in the last potty, but I didn't really tear it to shreds in the same correct way. But Ben Brown, uh, there was some pundit that said he should get traded. Uh-huh. What do you make of that? And what, what would it take for you to accept that deal if you were North Melbourne? That's tough. Like, I wouldn't trade him myself. Like, yeah, because I, I don't know what you'd get for him, but could help your team more than he can. Like, yeah. if you're North Melbourne. Yeah, the the best. Unless analogy... someone was like disgruntled or something, and you could use him as a player chip, and he was keen to go wherever that was, maybe. But the if best... it was picks and shit, I wouldn't want to dump him for picks. The best analogy I've ever heard for like trading draft picks for or players for draft picks is um. In Family Guy, when there's a mystery box, yeah. and he, Peter Griffin has the choice of a mystery box or a boat, yeah. and then she's like, "Why wouldn't you just choose the boat?" And he's like, "A boat's a boat, but a mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat." And it's, it's the same <laughs> yeah. example with draft picks and good players. Yeah, yeah. Like a draft pick could be yeah. a good player, or it could be a Ben. That's Brown. always been my thing. Like with the Freo the past years, like when we've offloaded players, it's like I didn't want to just cop necessarily just be like, "Oh, another first round pick." Just yeah, off. that's you it. Get a bit like. We had these players, we want to keep them. Yeah, exactly. Not just bleed them for more mystery. Yeah, it's just, it just becomes a revolving door. Yeah. Um, prediction for North Melbourne from here? Bottom four. I have them bottom four as well. Yeah. Uh, and how would you grade their performance? I'd say a D because I had them somewhat competitive for finals and they're yeah. really far think, off that mark. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, an F. It's not a... Yeah, okay. You can make a case for F, but probably I think they'll... No, actually, you could make a compelling argument for F because yeah. their expectations should be higher than what they've yeah, produced. Their their expectations are higher than the other teams we've discussed so far. For I'll sure, maybe said D minus. Yeah, yeah, just to hit, set, sit on the fence with that one. Um, let's move on to the Hawks quickly. Uh, preseason expectation for me, I had them a Monty for finals. Yeah, I they, think I had them in that six to twelve. They currently sit fourteenth, six to twelve. That's yeah. broad. Broad. Well, that's what I. <laughs> Just making finals, just missing finals. Well, regardless, they're 14th at the moment with 87%. To what extent are they underachieving? They're losing games they shouldn't lose. Yeah. They're like not as consistent. They're not as hawthorny as we're mm. used to seeing them. But is that a mental thing? Because I think they played some reasonable footy previously, mm. other than, you know, getting an eye They've been in a long. bit of a slump. They have been in a slump. And then they flicked the switch, like, in the second quarter, I want to yeah. say, against Carlton. Yeah, yeah, what did you, quarter, yeah, what did you make of them live when you saw Hawthorne Carlton? Yeah, it was, like, it was more the Hawthorne than I expected. Like, even that first quarter where Carlton was sort of all over them, you 
didn't feel like it wasn't convincing legal over them. Like mm. even though score wise was quite convincing, like yeah, they can't stuff this. But right, but part, eye test wise, it wasn't convincing. The Carlton. Oh really? Led and then Hawthorne just plugged away at it. Played well. Played disciplined. Mm. Yeah, they played a bit more aggressively yeah. against the Blues from what I could see in terms of like their ball movement. Um, instead of like using the the wings, yeah. they sort of like went through the corridor a bit more. Um, where do you think they'll go from here? This year, I'd probably see them in that 13, 16 sort of... Wow, that's harsh. Yeah, I'd like... That's where we differ. I still think they'll... I think they'll push unrealistically for finals, meaning they'll yeah. be in that those seams that are mathematically a chance right yeah. up to the end of the season, but probably not quite finished. So I had them like 10th or 11th. Yeah, yeah probably 13th to 16th. Maybe 12, what, 12 16. Mm. Oh, that's not... Yeah, yeah, I don't think they'll. They're a bit up and down. Their yeah. best footy is so good, and their terrible, their worst yeah. footy is, has been terrible. Um, what would you do? Let's say they miss finals, and we talked about it in the last pod. But what would you do this off season specifically, strategically? So they're an aging side, older yeah. side. Keep if they picks. miss finals, just keep picks. Would yeah. you? Would you target more picks, or would you just sort of be on the back foot? I, sort of maybe thing? if. If a club made an offer for like an Isaac Smith or mm. something like that, where you could get another second round, probably or too old third to really... rounder or whatever through the door. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. a tough one. the The only reason I'd move, uh, offload those guys cheap is if it was for salary cap money, and yeah. then to go for a big star. It'd be really interesting to see if like any side can land big stars this year. Mm. Up teams going to be willing to travel into state, or are they going to be more willing to travel into state? Uh. That'd be interesting. Particularly if they're a Victorian-based interstate club player, yeah. like a South Australian or West yeah. Australian. That'd be a really interesting test. Actually. Maybe this is the year Paddy Cripps goes, bugger this, I'm coming back to Perth. Yeah, I don't think that's realistic. But yeah, it's not yeah. realistic. Well, yeah. Speaking of Paddy Cripps, let's now move on to the Blues. Pre-season expectation. What was yours? I probably had him in that, yeah, that probably 11 to 15 y sort of range. Right. Okay. Maybe 16, like sort of just flirting with bottom four, but realistically pushing out of that into like mm. that mid higher teen, or well, mid low teens. I think I pegged them for top of the bottom four. Uh, I just thought they were another year off really taking that next step, even though we saw some really good form under Teague last year. Uh, they currently sit 13th, they're four and five, and their percentage is 98%. So that is actually reasonable. Um, a really alarming stat came across uh, my desk today. Not my desk. <laughs> but. David Teague has coached 20 AFL games for Carlton. Yeah. In 13 of them, he has conceded a 30-point swing. Uh, that's yeah. quite an alarming stat, isn't it? Okay, so like obviously they led the Hawks yeah. by 31 points, so that's an even big... Well, that's a 10-goal swing, actually, because yeah. they lost by five goals, if I'm not mistaken. But they've had slow starts against Richmond, St. Kilda, and Melbourne um, that have cost... I think, yeah, they lost all three of those games. So what we're seeing is just like massive either fade-outs or starts where they just simply do not show up and yes okay so they're they're our young side mm. uh, let's, let's they're, give they're similar that. to Freo I don't think they've played four quarters all year mm. yeah and I, that is that is symptomatic of a, a young yeah. side that's coming up the rank so it's not, it's not that concerning but it is just quite mm. a bizarre stat isn't it 13 yeah. out of is it 20 yeah, yeah. 13 out of 20. that's insane it's already 7 and 13 or something as a coach uh, no, because in some of those games, I think he's yeah. they've they've won as well. Yeah. So it was against North Melbourne they won, yeah. and they had actually conceded a yeah. thirty point swing as well. Yeah. Oh, so what? They had a thirty point lead, blew it, and then won the game, sort of thing. So a thirty point swing meaning? Oh yeah, no. So that, uh, let's say they were up by thirty eight and yeah. won by seven. Okay. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, Fair. Yeah, or like winning by two goals and lost by three. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, I think they're tracking nicely in terms of this is exactly where I thought they win a pretty much nestle around the ladder. So they've really lifted their their brand into being more of a side that can knock off a good side on their yeah. day. Like we did see that form at the end of last year, but for me, beating Geelong at GMHBA is the biggest step. That is a, that's one of the toughest yeah. like assignments in football. It'd be really interesting to see how they go against West Coast. I think it's, it's this week, isn't it? Uh, this yeah. Saturday. Um, probably getting West Coast at a bad time, I think, but... They've just they've started to develop that ability to knock off some giants, and I think yeah, I'm pr- probably thinking finals next year. Yeah. But for now, I think they've kind of settled into their own spot on the ladder. Um, where do you think they'll finish from here? Just out of the eight sort of area, like that 10, 13. 13. They'll they'll be where Freo usually are thirteen. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. 
I put push on realistically for finals as well, mm. but I've got them behind Hawthorne, Essendon, and the Bulldogs for that. Yeah. So I've got them in 12th, and I've given them a C. Which might seem harsh. They've had some really good results. They've had some yeah, bad I'd, results. I'd be pushing closer to a B for them myself. Yeah. I'd give them a B. I think for where Carlton are at and the amount of time they spent on the ladder, I think to to sort of stagnate and be where they were last year, that would have almost been an F. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So they have improved, but they need to improve. Yeah. And it's similar to Melbourne. But you can't penalise them for because they had to improve, and they have. You can't. No, no, I'll give, well, I'll give them a C. So yeah. I, they've ticked the box that they needed to, but not exceeded it. I think they've shown a little more than what they needed to this year. Really? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Differing opinions. You can get back. <laughs> uh, Melbourne next. This is more of a juicy one. Yeah. Preseason expectation. This We could have two different answers for this. Oh, so. yeah, this is a... Yeah, this is a bit more subjective for a side that we're top four in 2018. Yeah. Bottom two in 2019. Yeah. The door, like, it's so open. I can't even remember where I had him at the start of the season, really. I probably, I don't think I had him back in the finals. I think I sort of had them pushing. Yeah, I had I had finals contender. I didn't have, I yeah. couldn't justify them over some other teams because yeah. my case, my concern was them being mentally weak. Mm. And I think to some extent that's that view has been vindicated. So they're 12th, one less game than other teams, four and five and 100%. So on paper, not too bad. They've got some real bright spots. So, we know the elite talent on their list. They've probably added Petrarca to that now. Yeah, Petr- I think he can generally call himself an elite player. And Max Gorn is averaging 141 ranking points. I think that's Fox Footy's ranking points. Yeah. Uh, and he's playing with a tear in his shoulder. So like, they are, yeah. there are some real bright spots here. But There are some low spots too, like mm. Gus Brayshaw's having a pretty look down year overall by the sounds. Yeah. yeah. So that it's not all coming together for them. And it was never going to, I suppose. But do you think, do you think they're still like a mentally weak team? Seems to be like, and even like Goodwin, I'm probably getting less and less convinced. Him, he just looks a bit like depressed and gloomy, mm. and like, do not really something bad. Last dy- summer, right? Yeah, not really like a dynamic coach that can inspire guys out of the rut. He looks like he's in the rut. Yeah, fair enough. I, I don't know. Like to to smash Hawthorne in the way they did and look like they were going to make a like a run for finals to show up against Port in that way exactly. and get done by 51 points like Port exactly. are good but they're not that good do you know what I mean yeah that's yeah like if you're out of form that's one thing but Melbourne had no reason to not go into yeah. that game with without with confidence or yeah. without confidence so they're so yeah. erratic yeah how would you how would you grade their yeah so they they've got four wins they've beat Hawthorne Gold Coast Adelaide and Carlton D, I'd probably still say. I've given them a D minus yeah. because of ha- like last year we kind of gave them a mulligan. We we're like this year was so bad, yeah. and it was it's just a one off. But now they're kind of Pro- not yeah. improving that much. That the pressure does have to to mount on um, on Goodwin. If they do sack him, it would be a massive payout yeah. and massive strain on their football department spend. Oh, what's he recently been extended? Has he? Uh, I presume he probably got extended at the end of twenty eighteen. Yeah, uh, when they finish yeah, up, I'm not sure his contract situation is. Yeah, no, I believe yeah. that they're they're talking about it now. There's, I think it's Tom Morris has come out and said like the D's are considering sacking Goodwin, but it would cost uh. so much, similar to Ross Lyon, yeah. like the year before he got sacked. Um, um, at, at what, what point? point bearing, bearing, okay, okay, so, so let's say hypothetically that's true, that's true and and, uh, and, and it, it would include like require a massive strain on their budget. budget. What would it take for you to sack Goodwin right now, or at the end of the year? It'd, It'd probably, probably take them not winning another game. game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that like would be a, with this season, with everything going on, you could probably justify him not doing that great and them only scraping a couple more wins throughout the year. But if they won no more games and looked shit doing it, mm. at that point you'd be asking serious questions of him. Yeah. So there's eight weeks to go. So it's not winning another game. It's doable, but that would be pretty bad. So I guess yeah. that that bar's pretty low then. That yeah. you've set him. So you'll. You're probably inclined to think, yeah, no chance you will really get sacked. Uh, not this year. Not this year. Yeah, okay. Especially yeah. considering, like, even though I had this argument when Corona first hit with my dad, he's like, oh, no one should judge us. Like, They'll still be firing coaches and players off this season. I was mm. like, I, def- I was confident with that. Yeah. Yep. Let's move on to the Gold Coast Suns. This is a probably one of the better report cards. It's going to be a nice positive grade. I'm yeah. Sure this one. So preseason expectation, I had... I put them bottom two. I think I yeah. actually tipped them last, so I've kind of hedged with my notes here. Uh, they currently sit 11th, 4 and 5, with a positive percentage of 102%. Yeah. 
unearthed some great talent, but obviously losing Raul was a frustrating blow. That does suck, yeah. even for a neutral. Yeah. Um, Rankin's come in, come in and looks like a really good X young... X-Factor. Yeah, X-Factor X forward. Um, they've really sort of built like a com- competitive culture. I think that's what yeah. Dew really needed to do up there. It wasn't going to be a place where people would go and just be like, oh, this is the club we lose every week. You needed yeah. to, to sort of drive that competitive mindset. And that seems to be the case. Like, they're actually grinding out games. They belted the Eagles in round two, and maybe the Eagles were out of, t- out of form and stuff, but they still really put them to the sword and showed that they were tougher on the day. Um, this, they just need to sustain it for the, for the entirety of the season. This is probably the season that is going to be easier to do it. So they're not travelling, and... Um, the yeah they're, they're not, not travelling against a shorter season, season shorter quarter so, so like, like the, the fitness, fitness issue isn't compounded as, yeah it's not compounded that's right um, what, what have you made of the Gold Coast Suns and I don't know, know if you remember but we were talking about potential, potential Brad Crouch Matt Crouch poaching, poaching last year, year. Yeah. What, what what would you, you say, say about, about them, them potentially going after guys like that now maybe if you can offer at this point maybe if you can get it done with a pick or something but yeah, you yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't be offering, offering any of the kids, kids you've got through the door, door in exchange for them, no way in hell. Yeah, yeah, particularly because Matt and Brad are at Adelaide, obviously, yeah. and they have a few South Australian talents in yeah. Rankin and Lacocious. So you're thinking a firm no on offering a Lacocious at all? Unless Lacocious or Rankin gave you an inclination. Mm, that would suck, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. But if they did, you could, you're could. you in an opportunity to capitalise on it more than you probably normally could with the... But even then, I don't see how the Crouch boys probably help them that much at this point. Yeah, I was going to say, do you th- really think they need... Yeah, uh, they're not a need for Gold Coast yeah, at this point. Yeah, should they just continue going with the, the format they've got of guys yeah. like uh, Twig Miller, Back in your generation, you've got like, all yeah. the kids and stuff they've got there together all seem like a solid unit, like they're all close. Like You don't want to be in a situation where you're pushing out Raul out of a, like an on-ball yeah. spot or Noah Anderson exactly. when he's finally ready to, to really shoulder some midfield time. Exactly. So I, I would probably say if Brad Crouch said, yes, I'll come, I'd probably look at that really yeah. hard. And like you said, not not for a really key young player. Yeah. But like I think Pitt, Crouch... I'd, be, I'd probably throw a first round. He'd throw a oh, first yeah, round 100%. Him, yeah. yeah, first round out him. Maybe yeah. a first and a second. Yeah. Uh, but... I'm, I don't know about even a first and a second because he's good at getting the ball, but he's a bit of a, like... For the Saints specific, or maybe St. Kilda or something, it'd be worth a first and a second to I them. I think Brad Crouch is quite good. Yeah. I think Matt Crouch is the accumulator. I th- I'd prefer Brad Crouch. I'd, if for someone accumulate. like Gold Coast yeah. signing him yeah. for the value that he would offer them and some a real chance to strive up and be a finals contender, I do. that is attractive to me if I was a Gold Coast yeah. like, fan. I'm not as huge on the... If I, if I was Brad Crouch, I'd probably be more looking at like a St. Kilda or something where there is probably a more clear mm. inside midfield spot to be taken. Even though that probably is sort of to an extent at Gold Coast, but... I mean, you got Jack Steele, Seb Ross, Billings, like... Maybe Seb's Jones, getting a bit older, Hannah Bruce. Seb's only my age, he's 26. Yeah, he just looks old. Fucking hell, he looks yeah. fucking 40. The he's cunt. a dad, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. ripped. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> like guys like Hannah Bruce getting older, there's a few, there's a couple. Yeah, well, and Hannah Bruce really got on the park for him, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, that's true. I reckon there's more of a spot there for him than there would be at Gold Coast. I don't know, I think he could shift out of Anthony Miles or something like that pretty quickly, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, grade them an A. Yeah. Do we agree on that? Shit, yeah. And where do you th- finish? Probably in the nine to like maybe eight or maybe maybe eight to twelve. You think yeah. they could finish finals? Yeah, they could scrape in. Yeah, I have them f- away simply because I just think there yeah. are better teams. But yeah. yeah, so I have them pretty much where they are now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hollywood tenth. Would you believe it? Preseason expectation. Yeah. You'd say premiership yeah. contender, top yeah. four. Yeah. Up down the tenth. They're four, one, and four. With a percentage of 112, which shows that they have played some really good football. Um, I've had some adversity, some of it self-inflicted. Jordan Degoe missed football, now he's injured. Yeah. Uh, and side bottom, obviously, with the whole yeah. um, breaking Dr- isolation. Sink and piss. Yeah. And Ubering around the town. Yeah, and they've had injury concerns as well. And they've, they've, another side, which is yeah. terrible. Even the off-field history. stuff, like the whole Lumumba situation, is probably... Oh, yeah, that happened at the wrong hung, time. Yeah, hung awkwardly over. Nathan them, Buckley like, now, yeah. like with the tell tennis thing. Um, and they've been poor in the Perth Hub, it has to be said. So they've played Geelong. That was a good win. But then dropped their heads against West Coast was shocking. Yeah. And then Fremantle outplayed them yeah. for three quarters. And that's their thing. That's been their issue. Good start and go to Piers. Number one side for quarters, 17th for everything after that was the last time I saw yeah. that stat. It's ridiculous. Yeah, last time I saw it was 16th. So yeah, they've gone down to seven. It was, I think after, yeah. either after the Freo game or yeah. after. Because they, they, they kept Freo scoreless yeah. in the first quarter. 
at full flight, still one of the teams in yeah. the comp. So in round one, they tore up the Bulldogs. Absolutely killed. Uh, they beat the Cats pretty fairly convincingly. Yeah. Um, but the Eagles game was competitive as well, to be In the first quarter only. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Only in the first quarter. Four goals out of five, and then just lost yeah. the rest of the game by like five points or something stupid yeah. Like from that point. Um, they need to stay in the hunt for top four because it's going to be very hard to win it from sixth or seventh or something like that. I think they're good enough to win the flag. If any year you can win it from 6th or 7th, this is the year though, especially if there's not necessarily going to be home ground advantages for people and stuff. This yeah. is going to be the year where you can strike from that bottom half of the eight. Good point. I agree. So what I've got actually is I'll predict they'll miss the top four from where they are. Yeah, But I, I think they will at least make a prelim for the, some of the reasons you outlined and the yeah. fact that they're an experienced team. Yeah. And um, yeah, like they're one of the best teams on their form. How would you grade what you've seen so far from them? Currently in 10th. C minus D plus sort of thing. Yeah. Maybe even a D. What? Yeah, okay. So I think it was C minus just because they've had some bad injury luck. But yeah. probably a D is actually yeah, closer think, to the mark. Yeah. Now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, I'm a function. Some of it's self-inflicted with like yeah. losing side bottom dude. And um, yeah, just really and, poor losses in Perth. Yeah, and they should have the should have the cover it. The, the dev hasn't necessarily mm. as much as you'd hope. Yeah. I mean, we have seen them with injury issues in the last yeah. few years. Even in 20, I remember they had bad injury run and obviously stayed really competitive. I don't know. Maybe we're just talking yeah. about them at the wrong time because maybe in two weeks, some two contenders right. or whatever and, and look good. In fact, they're playing right now. As we speak, I think Collingwood are playing Sydney. Is it an Arvo, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 3.30. Bloody hell. Yeah. I love a gaze. Hold on. Keep them firing. All right, let's go to the Essendon Bummers. Pre-season expectations. I put finals. I think I had that like seven or like 11 sort of either just getting in or just getting out. Yeah. Yeah. So they've made finals, I think. They certainly made it in 2017. Huh. Did they make it? They made it in 2017. I think they made it in 2018. I could be wrong. Mm. Either way, they're just... They're in and out. Really yeah. around the finals mark every year. Yeah. They're currently ninth, five and four with a percentage of 88%. So that really speaks to inconsistency. The positive yeah. win-loss ratio... But 88%. That's bizarre. Like, they constantly one of the most inconsistent sides. Hardest to tip. Them we, and Port have been the enigmas of the comp for yeah. the past five years. And the Bulldogs. And the Dogs, yeah. Yeah. So, do you think, like, again, this is another side who is had issues with injuries this preseason with injury issues. I thought they played well early. I think they played a lot. They could have a go game round one. Round one, yeah. That was a very... That, if that game went another two minutes, they probably would have lost. Yep, and then they beat Sydney by a goal the following week. Yeah. So they have had some close ones as well. I don't know. Then you then you've got like a seriously perfor- poor performance against Brisbane Metricon. So a neutral yeah. game, really. Neither side tracks and have been in Queensland for a little bit. I guess they're out of their zone. So, yeah. But to get annihilated. The thing like is that, with that factor, though, Gold Coast and Brisbane are used to the weather up there compared to these Melbourne teams. They're used to being in cold Victoria at this time of year compared to the tropics, where it's probably the nicest weather of the year. Yeah, but you'd probably say up that way where it's hot and 28 degrees constantly. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Yeah, I mean, the Eagles struggled up there as well. That's true. Do you think fully fit, though, this Essendon side is good enough to fully contend, like, for top four and beyond? I don't know if they'd win a flag even at full strength. They're probably a pace or two away. Yeah, I think okay. if they could secure another pace, to like, even if they could keep Danaher on the park consistently, it'd probably yeah. count as one of those paces. The, their forward line is good on talent, isn't yeah. it? Like, if you add Danaher... It, at full potential, yeah. to tipping Woody, Fantasia, Stringer, um, amongst others, like that is yeah. dynamic. Maybe they just need to get another key forward, sort of like Dan because yeah. I don't know who knows if he's going to play for him again. Ben Brown, <laughs> not the worst shout to be honest. If yeah. they lose, if they lose Dan yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. Do, so I'll answer. Do I think they fully fit the contender? No, I think you nailed it. They're probably. Probably do need to add just a little bit more elite talent um, and just fucking win a final. Yeah. <laughs> they need to do that soon. Um, how would you grade what you've seen so far? Probably just, yeah, par for the course. Yeah, yeah probably give it a C. Was. Bad injuries, sitting outside the eight. Played one less game, to be fair. Yeah. But 88% again just reflects, you know, just a couple yeah. of performances. Again, against the Bulldogs as well. Um, okay, yes, they have the injury excuse, but then lack of intensity. A lot of like, teams have the injury excuse. The yeah. Half the teams we've talked about, we've brought up injuries. Mm. It's the intensity that's important as well. I've, yeah, some teams have injuries and then play better. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Let's move on to the doggies. Um, 
but the other bipolar team I mentioned. Yep. Preseason expectation. I have copied and pasted bottom four. That's a mistake. I was going to um, say that's just not right. Yeah, no, I'd say finals. Yeah, I had them in that. Yeah. I think people bottom actually half of the finals stage. Some people, in, I think even I, I might have jumped on this bandwagon at one point, just had seen their potential for premiership contention. Yeah. I mean, evidently. I just still think they're a fair way off the market at the moment. They're eighth, four and five, and again, 92%. Yeah. So like the Bulldogs, their percentage is taking a hit because they're so good at some times and mm. then woeful at others. So they thumped North and then got thumped by Carlton. And Carlton aren't exactly world beaters. They then thumped Essendon and then got thumped by Richmond, who again is a good side. But like, why are we seeing, why are we seeing these bipolar performances from them? They've gone like the 2014 port. They've, yeah. Except they actually got over the line, but they've pretty much been like that. They'll still show what they showed, but just not often enough to really impact the league. Yeah, they're almost like rebuilt a little bit as well. Like they had a lot of youth coming to that side. Like Norton obviously yeah. um, wasn't part of that. Baby Smith wasn't. And then, you know, Ed Richards, like they've yeah. had a lot of hard draft picks since then. But their team's not so young that they're like, yeah. they should still be playing so different from one week to the yeah. next. They are, they are do kind of play like a really developing side. Uh, it's it's strange. Do you think do you think they have much like capacity to really go deep this year? Probably not. I don't think mm. it's one of those things where you're going to want that depth and confidence in your talent mm. to be able to get it done this year, rather than more strategic and management and all that stuff. It's a bit more chaotic. Their top end talent is strong. Yeah, it's just and yeah, not they haven't really got much out of him this year. I think due to yeah. injury mostly. Um, and yeah, their forward line is probably a big weakness. They added Alex Keith and Josh Bruce over the off season, but yeah, yeah at the moment, Bruce we're... hasn't been bad for him. No, that yeah, he had a monster game early in the year, but yeah, that's right. But where would you, where do you, where do they go from here? Prediction. Uh, rest of the year, I probably feel like they'll plot along the same sort of pace they are, and either slip in or just fall out. No, give me decisive. All right, they'll finish ninth. Ah, yeah. Did you read mine? Because I wrote night. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got them in night as well. Nice. They're not in my top eight teams. Uh, good enough to play finals, but I simply rate other sides higher. In fact, the Collingwood and St. Kilda were the two teams I had higher than. Um, all right, let's move on to the GWS Giants. Last year's um, grand finalists. Runner-ups. Oh, yeah, r- yeah runner- runners-up. Uh, preseason expectation, fair to say, at least top four. Premiership contention. Uh-huh. Currently seventh with five and four. And 105%. Some of the football they've played this year has been pretty poor as well. And I, I didn't think, think they were that high. Yeah, I was surprised they were seventh yeah. as well. But they've had a couple of good wins since that happened. So they beat yeah. Richmond and then they beat um, Gold Coast. Okay, yeah, those help. So that, that's boosted them up the ladder. 105%. Um, how, what have you made of their performances? I, I guess probably haven't been that impressed with them. No, I, I think... Like, the, even their wins, it's like... You, other than the Richmond win... Their wins are just like, yeah, that's what you should do. You probably should have won by more. Interesting. Like, yeah, Richmond aren't... They're fast Richmond. Under, like, not the Richmond game. Every other win. Like, the Richmond right. game is probably the one actual legitimate, like, good on your boys. Mm. You did well there. Yeah. All their other wins are just like, good on you, buddy. Psh, you've got your <laughs> team. You should... Yeah. 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 But, I mean, they've lost at home to North this year. Yeah. And they lost and at home to well, yeah. Brisbane. So, like, they've had a couple of bad losses. And it's just like, what's going on? Do you think there's, like, a mental... Well, how much do you buy into like last year's grand final affecting them right now? I wonder if they did a camp with collective mind. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely not as bad as Adelaide were. Yeah, definitely not that bad. But yeah, there's, I think there is a bit of that getting pumped in a final voodoo, but they are probably got to work for a bit this year from what I've seen. It just seems like that's so long ago, though. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. so much has happened in the world that I feel like yeah. they're so far removed from what happened last year that it's... We are, though. Like, imagine being a player or yeah. part of that GWS organisation, though. That still would be sitting on you yeah. reasonably heavily, yeah. heavily, I feel. I suppose especially when you have that... Like, they came back from round one. They they torched along in round one, actually. Yeah. So they looked motivated. And then the break, yeah, probably yeah. took a bit of steam out of them. Because they probably, yeah, did come in with the right mentality. Mm. Like, on, yeah, we're going to redeem ourselves this season. We're going to do everything we can. Come in with a full bond of energy and then get served the corona bloody slam dunk. <laughs> That'd probably be a bit demotivating for them to say the least. How would you grade them? D minus. D, D minus. Yeah, I'll put D. Because I think C yeah. would be too generous. Where do they finish from here? They'll get in the finals. But scrape in. No top four? Maybe fifth. Yeah. I reckon fifth's probably their ceiling at this there's point. A, there's only eight weeks to go, so yeah. making a case for like a big strong run home and 
getting into the top four when you're currently not in it, yeah. it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit harder. We're like, it is midway through the season, but we're only eight weeks to go. It's going to be tight. All right, we're in our final six teams, I think it is. West Coast Eagles are sixth. Preseason expectation. You were pretty big on them. Yeah, pre -season. I pretty much had just minor premiers or second. Like, mm. It was you and Richmond. Yeah, I think that was the popular belief. Yeah. I had them top two or three. I think yeah. I had third in my... Like, you might have had GWS higher from memory. Yeah, I think I actually had them first. Yeah. Um, but they're currently six. Six and three, 115%. Been a bit of an like a mixed season from them so far. Great round one, terrible in the hub. Yeah. Came back strong, had a bit of confidence against Sydney and Adelaide and Fremantle, a few yeah. bottom of, like lower, all bottom four actually teams. And then sort of have come in and been a bit fortuitous, I think, with the players, with the teams we're playing against in the hub. So Our hub, you mean, not the Queensland. Yeah, sorry, yeah. the Perth hub. So in the Perth hub, they're going to have Collingwood. <laughs> they will have had Collingwood. Yeah. We've beaten them. We've beaten Geelong. Yeah. Thank God we didn't play them at GMHBA. And we're also going to be having um, the Giants. Yeah. So three, what I would have said, top four to six teams in Perth during this period of, of good form, that's uh, that's pretty bloody handy for yeah. them. What have you made of the Eagles so far? Other than the, like, yeah, the slow start, like not slow start, well, slow post-corona start, they've yeah. really shaken off that rust and like mm. kind of got back to what they do best. Kind of, well... Thing is, because they probably had, they've had to make adjustments in that midfield to accommodate Tim Kelly. Mm. So they they would have had the one game initially, and then sort of like had adjustments, not been able to do them. Probably spent stewing for ages trying to figure shit out. Yeah, tried to do some stuff early in the hub, and then maybe they've just gone back to the basics. Yeah, they. Um, I think fitness might have been an issue. I don't want to make excuses for them, but let's call it what it is. There, there were clearly something. There yeah. were some factors that influence why they played so bad and there were observations at the time that maybe they just didn't look like they want to be in the hub now mm. that's a chicken egg situation was that because they were playing shit or did they go there with the wrong mindset mm. it doesn't really matter too much now but the Eagles will have to go back to Queensland and probably play teams like Richmond away Essendon yeah. away St Kilda away uh, when I say away I mean in Queensland or a yeah. neutral venue so it'll be interesting to see how a team that's proven to be very poor in Queensland especially in dewy conditions, copes with a second hub. With that in mind... I think they'd go better a second go around because they've gone up there the first time. They've had the experience. Mm. They know it couldn't be any worse. They know what to improve upon. I yeah. think they could approach it a lot better if they had to cop another stint up there. I sure hope you're right. With that in mind, where are they going to finish from here, Bush? Probably top three, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Probably top two, I'd guess, subject to how many, how long they get to stay in Perth. Top two will be tough considering... If I knew the fixture for the full year, I'd probably be able to yeah. guess that better, depending on how many games they play here compared to mm. Queensland for the rest of the duration. Yeah. Well, Brisbane and Port, I think, might have entrenched themselves in top two, but we'll, we will get to those teams. Um, I think they will finish top four. I think we'll slide into the top four. How would you grade what we've seen so far? So six and three and sixth. I'd probably give them a C. Yeah, I was thinking of C2. Yeah, or, like they haven't yeah. really showed that they're the premier team of the comp until like the past couple of weeks. Yeah. They've shown that the full season. But it, the on the flip side of that, at least they are a team that has, at full flight, made people go, wow, yeah. this team could win the flag. Whereas you, there are some teams who maybe sit even higher than them that you're like, ooh, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that in itself is positive. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say C as well, 115%, yeah. considering where they were like five weeks ago. Exactly. Um, they've turned that around really well. Oh, an interesting stat. Top five players rated by champion data in for the first 67 minutes of a game. Uh, Nick Natanui is the top ranked player. Hmm. Now you can, I know you I had you. he falls off after the 67th minute. Oh, he plays limited minutes. Uh, so there's that. Uh, he was also probably having a career best season. Yeah. Yes, this is cherry picking stats to suit an argument. And yes, we have both criticised champion data as well in the past. <laughs> yeah. saying it's bullshit, but it is interesting to look at. And just for interest's sake... The next four players are Christian Petrarca, which I think we all agree. Arguable oh, yeah, on his form. One, of, one of the best players. Nat Fife, yeah. proven legend. Yeah. Uh, Shuey made the top four, which surprised me a little bit. That's surprising. I think he's a sick player, but um, not generally I didn't recognized. think he had inspired form this year necessarily. He's had good games and not so yeah. good games. And Max Gorn, yeah. the player we Gorn's already talked about. So I thought that was interesting. Let's go with the Geelong Cats. Pre-season expectation. They're a side that finished first last year, and probably with the second best side, if you look at the season holistically, the next best side after Richmond. Um, GWS obviously got 
done in the grand final, but they finished sixth and stuff like that. Yeah. Preseason expectation for a side, they're just a side that continually you think is going to drop down, or at least it's just the popular belief. Yeah. They also lost Tim Kelly. Mm. So that plus the ageing, I had them top six. Yeah, I still had them making finals, so I had them in that. Yeah, yeah, I certainly didn't think they were going to miss finals. But yeah, okay, so if we just conservatively say top six, they currently sit fourth, are six and four with 122%. What have you made of them, particularly given you've seen them in person as well when we yeah. saw them against Rio? Yeah, I think they've done pretty well overall the whole year, like, and they've still got like capacity to get better when they need to. They've mm. had some guys in and out a bit. Yep. Gary Ablett's going through his own personal stuff at the moment. He's dealing with Joel Salwood's been out. True. So once those guys are back in and... Heads of comfortable enough to give it a good crack in finals. I think mm. they can do some damage. Yeah, I certainly think they're a premiership contender. I definitely still do. Um, other than the best team in the comp, probably not. But with their experience and like how mature that side is, you'd back them in a final against the St Kilda or Port Adelaide at this stage yeah. for me. Um, yeah, especially like one of those teams where it's their first grand final. Yeah, and there's always yeah. a bit of that. It's your first grand final shit yourself tendency. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, just. Really, really good list. I thought though the way they travelled to Perth has been pretty solid. So they're yeah. one and two, but like Collingwood, but um, nearly, nearly top of West Coast. I thought that was a very strong showing. They just couldn't quite hold it on for four. Oh yeah, that, that's because Powell's carrying on for four. Yeah, Collingwood was competing, but I got Collingwood and fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I got yeah, those yeah. two mixed up when I was. Yeah, just, just it. Collingwood. No, the Eagles annihilated yeah. Collingwood. Yeah, yeah, I got but, those um, two mixed up. Yeah, yeah. they probably inflated the Eagles. At that time as well, yeah. but then I just thought the Eagles versus Geelong game probably one of the first games this year where I watched it and thought this is the intensity of a yeah. final. To be honest, yeah. I, I can't recall too many games like that at all this year. No, it's been a bit yeah, lapidaisical. Yeah, the whole, there's, I'm sure there's it, been exceptions. Like, there has yeah. been. I'm sure there's examples that I'm just not thinking yeah. of. But um, yeah, in terms of the skill level it was yeah. high and the intensity was high. Like that's a rare combination. Um, but yeah, like I thought they showed a lot of sort of strength to come over to Perth and nearly get the job done. And the Eagles, again, on the flip side, I think that was a really positive performance for them to overcome a really good side in Geelong. Um, 122%, that's a really healthy, really good position to be in to sort of launch an assault on trying to finish top four. Will they finish top four? If they do, it'll be in fourth, I think. Mm. They're probably in that four to six yeah. range, I think. I think the teams I have ahead of them are... Uh, West Coast now that they've played them, yeah. Brisbane, yeah. Richmond, yep. and I think just because they're eight and two, and we'll talk about it, Port Adelaide. Yeah. So I do think they'll probably just need out in the top no. four. But how would you grade their performance this year? Probably a C plus, B minus. Yeah, I, would pro- I was thinking favorite. probably B to be honest. A yeah. um, little bit of adversity uh, to be in the top four at the moment with a really cushy percentage. Yeah. Uh, that's a big tick, to be honest. And they've lost Tim Kelly, like, yeah. you know, plenty of reason to doubt them, but they're, they're going along pretty yeah. well and they're in a good shout to, to win the flag. Let's talk about St Kilda, another side that's exceeded expectations. So, Definitely. What did they finish last year? Bottom six? Yeah, because like 12 or something? Yeah, because they were just behind us or just in front of us. Right. 12 or 14th, because I remember yeah. we had the consecutive picks after we got their pick off from Brad Hill. Okay. Gotcha. They might have been worse than us. They might have been 14th. Yeah, okay. That sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, so I put conservatively with their changes and trades last year, 9th to 12th, because uh, they had one of the worst injury runs last year. Um, so they sit 6 and 3 at the moment, and in third, percentage of 126%. So usually percentage is a really good indicator of how well a side is playing. In yeah. my opinion, I, I'm not the only one who thinks that. But um, they did really well with their recruits. We've talked about it a little bit. Ryder and Rowan Marshall could now. This I feel like they're starting to find. They'll figure it out. The same They've got the ability to figure it out, and if they do, it'll be really good. They just, be like it's the just a matter of figuring it out for them. Yes, they'll be one of the best ruck combos going. Um, they're a fast-paced side now. They've got Zach Jones in there. Is that Dan Butler? A bit of leg speed. Yeah. Brad Hill. I know yeah. he hasn't really yeah. captured his form, but there's some decent yeah. leg speed in that team now. Um, should be eight and one. We talked about it last week. The two losses. They lost by conceding 30-point-plus margins against your mob yep. and North Melbourne. So that's pretty shameful. Yeah. Uh, their only other true loss... Not true loss. Their only other like genuine bona fide loss was um, Collingwood. They got done yeah. pretty easily. But to be, they should be 8-1. One of the most accurate kicking sides. They beat Port yeah. away. And Port weren't in a slump. Like They yeah. showed some quickly. the team of the comp at that stage. Yeah, that's right. Um, they have just broken their membership record. 47,000. Good on. Yeah. So yeah. it is nice to see some, uh, some smaller clubs... Yeah. Make strides in that area. 
Um, and I do wonder now if they actually are successful, whether they will start to be successful in attracting players yeah. that they struggled to before. And I guess, like, you could say they got bloody paid rider Brad Hill to yeah. join them last season, season. So that's a pretty good coup. But, yeah, um, yeah Benny Even Richard, Dougal Howard, he was a pretty... Yeah, true. He was probably the most sought after after with Brad Hill out of all yeah, those guys. Yeah, true. And most, like, Hawthorne could do with a Dougal Howard. Yeah. But anyway, um, they beat Richmond as well. It was it what I was going to say. So they've also yet to play Brisbane, West Coast, GWS and Geelong. So out of the next eight weeks, they're coming against four sides you can make a case uh, four yeah. of the best five or six in the, t- in the comp. Interesting question. So like, like T, Brett Ratton was a caretaker coach. Yeah. So he had experience with St. Kilda before. I, I feel like you might have actually made this point before. Do you think that has made it an easier transition for Ratton? Yeah, cause especially because I felt because he was this, I think the point I made was because he was assistant as well. He was probably like Richardson was maybe the taskmaster that just went, this is the system you do it. Maybe Ratton was more the glad to approach the players and be like, yeah, you're a good fella, yeah, you did well here. Like, <laughs> yeah. More the player relationship sort of guy, because you see the players really respect and admire him. True. Like, they were stoked when he got yeah. the head coaching gig, like, based on the footage that I saw. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I just think there's like an extra few months he's got on other news. Yeah. New coaches where you just you don't have to build those relationships. You've yeah. already got knowledge and relationships and an understanding of the players yeah. and vice versa. Um, that's not to say that that's why the St Kilda have come good. He's yeah. obviously a good coach, but I just wondered if that's a small factor. Um, and the, the final comment is they're the healthiest list in the league, which is good because last year they were the unhealthiest list in the league, and that kind of also yeah. goes to show the difference between when a side has all their players to pick yeah. from and when it doesn't. Um, and yeah, so where do you predict they'll finish from here? I reckon they're probably in uh, maybe three to six. Okay, really? Yeah. That's well. That's quite yeah. That's quite yeah. A, a generous thing. I've got them in seventh. I just think they'll get leapfrogged by a few teams who come good at the business end yeah. of the year. Um, but uh, you know they still haven't done much wrong, and yeah. that's why I'm giving them an A. As but well. even if they deal with the four crab teams and then go the even four crab teams, well, I'm assuming the four teams they're playing but aren't the four you named are. World yeah. leaders of the world. I haven't, I haven't looked at that yeah. de- in depth. I just know. Yeah, but yeah, those four teams you named, even if they went like one and three and went three out of four and again, their other four games are probably yeah. still in a pretty comfortable position. It's hard to do the math this year on it because yeah. this year, like obviously there's less games, yeah. so making the finals, it's different. But are you in agreement that they're in A as Definitely. well? Definitely. A, A plus, well, maybe not A plus, A. Yeah, I'd say A. Yeah. I actually didn't even do any A pluses actually, I don't think. Yeah. Let's talk about Richmond. Reigning Premier, pre-season expectation would be top two. Yeah. Certainly. Top four, at least, if you're more conservative. Um, six, one, and three, so one draw, 123%. They've kind of taken their time to time their run, and I think that's, that's kind that's of... That's a habit of theirs, though. Yes. Yeah, it is. And I, Well, it's, it's a sign of them in their Premiership years. So the one year they didn't win the Premiership is when they started really well and went mm. consistently well for the entire season. We were going 18-4. and four. Uh, uh, Last year they were 15-7 and seven and, and were a better side, arguably. So they put the Lions to the sword on the weekend. So I talked that up as a grand final preview. Uh, and I still think they're probably the two sides I think will play in the grand final at this stage. Really. Subject of fixture in that there's too many variables for me to comfortably... Well, I just think Richmond are the best side. Yeah. And I do think the Lions, with their... Lack of travel, and yeah. fair enough. Like I understand why yeah. they're and they're a good team. Yeah. They're, I think they're the best suited to to make that sort of um, part of the grand final. But they're playing excellent footy, and I, like I said, it's ominously reminiscent of 2017 and 2019, where they started out unconvincingly, and people yeah. were like, "Richmond are over the hill now." But uh. yeah, I think to torch Richmond, sorry Brisbane, the way they did, and then I, I feel like the, their sort of what's the word trajectory at the moment. Mm. It's going to put them very, very close to being in the final four, yeah. maybe in the grand final. Um, they've had a little bit of a adversity. Presti is injured at the moment. Mm. Hawley and Edwards are out of the team. I think Hawley's back. Is he? I think he's re-travelled to the team in the hub or whatever. You now. might be right. I might have missed that in the whirlwind yeah. of AFL content right now. Um, you see the AFL is kind of fed up with them in the hub. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you yeah. see? I don't know if it was real, but that, what was that article suggesting like... They were like whinging about like mm. they wanted they had pup they wanted to bring puppies to the hub yeah. they wanted buddy all sorts of shit I can see them being prima donnas yeah I mean a, a puppy that's fine Jack Rewalt's a fucking prima donna yeah so that's an interesting like what do you make of that what players it seems like he's been fucking whinging all year yeah 
It seems like players who are older and more family oriented, yeah. so the more experienced teams, and I think West Coast were kind of like this as well, yeah. are less suited to doing well in hubs. Like yeah. even if you compare like West Coast and Fremantle, it yeah. seemed with the way they coped with the hub. Yeah. I don't know if I'm reading too much into it. Was Fremantle were like. A lot of young single dudes there yeah. just like got on an extended holiday with yeah. your mates. Yeah, exactly. A little bit different for like a family oriented team yeah. or all like my age and older who have young kids to lead their families. Yeah, it is a bit yeah. different. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't now, know. Plus with the media sort of thing, like the perception, like cause both teams are realistic around by the WA Football Commission. The perception was the Eagles were using their much more way to whinge and try and sort yeah. of yeah, that's true. get us a better, both teams a better deal. Yeah, well that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But Whereas Freo were just sort of happy to let Eagles be the bad guys. Yeah, yeah, as usual. Yeah. <laughs> How would you grade Richmond? Probably a B. Okay, I've got, I've given them an A, a little bit, mm. maybe a little bit generously. I just think mm. the position they're in at the moment, um, hubbing a couple yeah. of players out, and I know every other club is hubbing really, but I just think they're the form side of the comp, just about. Yeah. I'd still say Port, but that's like. Well, they play tomorrow night, uh, Saturday night. Yeah. We might even live stream it. Yeah. So that would be the test, but I'm comf- I'm confident Richmond will win. So it depends where it is. Yeah, if it's Adelaide, I, think, I think it's Queensland. Yeah, yeah. Could so, be wrong. They get fucking Ports undefeated. It's fucking Queensland, aren't they? Yeah, I think they are actually. Yeah. yeah. So they've lost to St Kilda and they should Brisbane. Move to no, they lost to Brisbane. Port somewhere in Queensland. <laughs> Become the Port, whatever yeah. team. Yeah. In Queensland, and they kill it up there. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the Lions. Their preseason expectation for a side that finished second last year. I think I had them just out of the top four because I figured they'd have a bit of a decline mm. this year after copping a harder mm. schedule. Well, what was going to be a harder schedule, assuming a full season and all that. Yeah, I made those arguments yeah, as well. I had, had the higher expectations. I had four to six, and fair to say the fixtures ended up a lot easier for them than they could have possibly imagined in that you know yeah. away games at Metricon. Yeah, uh, I, I, I know. Like again, I'm not hanging shit on them. Yeah, it's, it's like, not their fault, but it's like. It's still facts. It's just like, yeah, no travel yeah. makes it a lot easier to cope with the demands yeah. of playing in this season so far. Um, but they're seven and three hundred and eighteen percent. They've consolidated last year's form. Good injury run again, and yeah. so that you can put that down to good management as well. Um, the fact that someone like Alex Witherden was playing resis, yeah. and um, he comes in and like is one of the better players on the list. Oh, sorry, on my, in that game. So yeah. um, really good spot. They've got some pretty good depth. The only blip they had it. Yeah, literally yeah. the only blip they've had this year is Richmond on the yeah. weekend. Oh, what well, was it two nights ago? Yeah. Losing track. <laughs> um, annihilated by Richmond yeah. at Metricon. They've got stars in every line. That's the thing with Brizzy as well. Like mm. Paris Andrews is probably the premier defender of the league at the moment. Yep. Lockie Neal's running away with the brown low, I'd say. Yeah. Charlie agree. Cameron's an elite forward. Yeah. yeah Even Hipwood's right. getting there. But... And they have mature elite players and they have young superstars as well. Yeah. Like a McClane engine. Etc. as well. Yeah. They do actually just have a bad record against Richmond. I think they've lost 15 straight against them. So <laughs> yeah, if they played them against yeah. in, in, Can I remember that? Finals. Yeah, going into last year's finals, they played them down at MCG and Richmond absolutely sorted them, I remember. Yeah, uh, it was about five goals, I think, but yeah. they were comfortably better. And then I think in week one of the finals, Richmond did them pretty easily at the yeah. Gabba. So, yeah. Um, I put Neil Brown my favourite as well. Yeah. Yeah, he, this is his year. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, no travel as well, really, has really yeah. helped their recovery and will continue to help them, especially if we see a final series in Queensland. So, with that in mind, what's your prediction? Well, for where they finish? Yeah. I'll probably have them, yeah, top four. I have them finishing top. It. Yeah, fair. I think they'll finish top. Um, whether they'll win the grand final, I'm not sure, because you know, yeah. they might come up against a Richmond and that will change it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give them an A. How would you, how would you grade them? Yeah, I'd probably have to give them the A because you can't penalise them for that travel factor like yeah. I was saying, like, so you'd give them the A. Yeah, so they've had one blip on the radar, still sits second. Mm. Um, really good position to launch in the second half of the year and potentially win this year's leg. Right. All right, final team to talk about are Anthony's The Pair. I had pre-season expectation 9th to 12th, so I didn't have them in my final eight this year. And they currently sit 8-2 and two with a percentage of 145%. Big boy percentage. Yeah. What did you think they were going to finish? I think year? I had them in that, like, just making or just missing finals. Kind yeah. Of, like, in that Essendon, just making, just missing finals group. Yeah. 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 I think that's that's fairly fair. They've got, like, we're talking about this in the last I was month. impressed with them in the pre-season coming into the year before everything happened. Like, like Charlie Dixon was the best I'd ever seen. He was so mobile and stuff. Like, their mids were more cohesive, like... Mm. Didn't look like Dersma Butters and Rosie were necessarily going to cop 
two severe second year blues, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's not often you see a good draft haul just influence a team in the short term yeah. in the same way. I remember there was, we had it with Gaff, Darling, and um, and uh, someone else, I think, last year, back in the day. Nah, so we got Gaff, Darling, and then I think Shuey debuted or like played his uh, early yeah. days. It doesn't matter. But anyway, like young players coming in yeah. and influencing and making the team better straight away. It doesn't happen yeah. that often. But that has happened with Paul. They've got a great blend of experience and youth. Mm. So some of the more enviable youth in the competition and good balance of inside and out. So they used to have a problem where they were probably a little yeah. bit too inside a few years ago. They've, they've changed yeah. that up now. Um, they're not a star-studded team, are they? Yeah, probably... Robbie Gray used to be probably considered that mm. great, but at this point he's probably not in that category. Yeah, the, the, the side is littered with like a lot B of plus. B plus, yeah. maybe A minus on their day. Yeah. And this is not a criticism. Well, they, on his day, Robbie Gray's an A grader, but he's just not on sure. his day often enough to get the grade, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Even Tom Rockcliffe probably has the potential to play an A grade game, but he just doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. Do and Boke has probably been yeah, just about their best player yeah. this year. So, and Boke Charlie Dixon. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, those guys are not guys that you would say all Australian walk up. Uh, Most teams Dixon have an all Australian walk up. I mean, like, year on year. Okay, yeah. So, like, for, for the Eagles, enough, yeah. or say, like, I'll say, for you it's Fife, yeah. used to be Lockie Neal, Brad, maybe, Brad, yeah. maybe not Brad Hill, but Walters. Yeah. For us, it was it's McGovern, McGovern yeah. Kennedy. So Port don't have that, and yeah. yet they're still at this point the best team. That come. I probably yeah. wouldn't have them the best team, but they're at least mm. up in the conversation with that. So um, yeah, we talked about Dixon. We talked about Robert Gray. They had a strong challenge from the Dogs on the uh, last week, yeah. and I thought that was actually a pretty impressive, mature performance. I feel like this was a performance. This was a game Port would have lost in the previous yeah. couple of yeah. years. They were challenged, probably. The dogs were probably the better side for most of the game, but Port held on and held strong, and that's what good teams do. They battle through and win games that you don't necessarily think they're in control of. So, yeah, to sit 8-2 and in a massive percentage of 145% is crazy. I think they need about four out of seven wins for top two, so they're yet to play Richmond, Collingwood, and Geelong. We'll see. We'll get an answer on Geelong. Sorry, we'll get an answer on Richmond soon. They play them in a couple of days. Collingwood, it'll be interesting to see where they're in form. Um... There's a couple more danger games I haven't played Essendon or Hawthorne yet, but they're in a really good position to finish top two. Yeah. What is your prediction? I'd probably, yeah, top two for them, I think. Mm. It's hard to make that case against them. Yeah. I'm going to predict they slip up and finish third. I've got a question. How close do you think Ken Hinckley is to an extension? Um, not that close. When's he out of contract? Is, is it this year? year? Yeah. Oh, then he needs an extension. So Yeah, yeah okay. Um... Good question. I reckon it might be once they lock in finals because they've burned themselves before by getting close and then falling, they are falling out of their season. I'd say once they can't miss finals, and that, to be honest, that's probably only two wins away. Yeah. Yeah. And even then, maybe just give them a year or two extension rather than a four year. Yeah. Yeah. Again, if I was in a position where I was in charge of hiring and firing of a football club, I'd never give a four year extension to a coach Mm. after what I saw happen to Freya with Ross. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Are we giving them an A? I don't think they yeah. could have done too much more. Maybe Definitely. even an A plus, actually. Yeah, A plus. This is probably if anyone deserves the A plus, it's them, I think. Yeah. The All right, Bush, we've come to the end of the pod. This has been a monster. Yeah, big boy. I'm exhausted. Sure. Yeah, especially after all the manscapes broken we've done before the podcast. Yeah, and all the manscaping I have to do when I get home with my new product. So yeah. if you're listening or watching, make sure you go to manscaped.com if you're interested in buying these sorts of products uh, for the, what is it, the premium ball hair shaving products yeah. in the world yeah. precision tools for the family jewels that's the one yeah that's it so yeah obviously you got a cool opportunity thank you. <laughs> you got a cool opportunity to use a discount code yeah. true footy or caps um but you'd be helping out the channel you'd be saving yourself money if you're going to buy that stuff anyway um and i believe this is pretty much going to only be available for august this discount as well so might as well get around it while you can so pounce bastards thanks everyone for watching or listening and uh we'll see you in the next podcast thank you everyone cheers